President Edwards, NFMC officers, members, students, and guests. It's a pleasure to speak with you this morning during the opening session of the 2019 NFMC Biennial Convention here in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. In 1946, the Department of Public Information, DPI, was established by a United Nations General Assembly resolution to promote global awareness and understanding of the work of the United Nations. The DPI's mission was dedicated to communicating the ideals and work of the United Nations to the world, to interacting and partnering with diverse audiences, and to building support for peace, development, and human rights for all. In 1949, three years after the creation of the Department of Public Information, our Federation was accredited and recognized as a non-governmental organization within the United Nations DPI. This year, our Federation celebrates 70 years of association with the United Nations, and I am honored to serve as your representative. For seven decades, the Department of Public Information fulfilled its mission and has been an integral part of worldwide changes supporting the pursuit of equality, peace, and prosperity for all. In January of this year, the Department of Public Information was renamed the Department of Global Communications. With it came a new directive that the department was now committed to the success of UN Agenda 2030 and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. On January 1st, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres addressed the global community through a short video. Let's watch it together. Dear fellow citizens of the world, I wish you a happy, peaceful and prosperous new year. Last New Year, I issued a red alert, and the dangers I mentioned still persist. These are anxious times for many, and our world is undergoing a stress test. Climate change is running faster than we are. Geopolitical divisions are deepening, making conflicts more difficult to resolve, and record numbers of people are moving in search of safety and protection. Inequality is growing, and people are questioning a world in which a handful of people all the same wealth as half of humanity. Intolerance is on the rise, trust is on the decline, but there are also reasons for hope. The talks on Yemen have created a chance for peace. The agreement signed in Riyadh in September between Ethiopia and Eritrea has eased long-running tensions and brought improved prospects to an entire region. And the agreement between the parties to the conflict in South Sudan has revitalized chances for peace bringing more progress in the past four months than in the previous four years. The United Nations was able to bring countries together in Katowice to approve the work program for the implementation of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Now we need to increase ambition to beat this existential threat. It's time to seize our last best chance. It's time to stop uncontrolled and spiraling climate change. In recent weeks, the United Nations also oversaw landmark global agreements on migration and refugees that will help to save lives and overcome damaging myths. And everywhere, people are mobilizing behind the Sustainable Development Goals, our global blueprint for peace, justice and prosperity on a healthy planet. When international cooperation works, the world wins. In 2019, the United Nations will continue to bring people together to build bridges and create space for solutions. We will keep up the pressure and we will never give up. As we begin this new year, let's resolve to confront threats, defend human dignity and build a better future together. I wish you and your families a peaceful and healthy new year. So what is Agenda 2030? The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015, provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. At its heart are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which are an urgent call for action by all countries developed and developing in a global partnership. 
They recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education, reduce inequality, and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forests. Agenda 2030 is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. It grew out of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals and was implemented in January 2016. It aims to transform our world and to improve people's lives and prosperity on a healthy planet. It applies to all countries through partnerships and peace. Countries, regions, cities, the business sector, and civil society are actively engaged in implementing the agenda and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. They are mobilizing efforts to end all forms of poverty, fight inequalities, and tackle climate change while ensuring that no one is left behind. Each of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals addresses a specific challenge facing the world population, including ending hunger, guaranteeing quality education and gender equality for all, and taking action to combat climate change. For example, SDG number one aims to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. The United Nations goal targets for SDG number one include the following. One, by 2030, eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere, currently measured as people living on less than $1.25 a day. Two, implement nationally appropriate social protection systems and measures for all, and by 2030, achieve substantial coverage of the poor and the vulnerable. Three, create sound policy frameworks at the national, regional, and international levels based on pro-poor and gender-sensitive development strategies to support accelerated investment in poverty eradication actions. SDGs 2 through 16 are just as precise in their targets for change as number one, while SDG 17 focuses on the need to develop partnerships. Quote, a successful sustainable development agenda requires partnerships between governments, the private sector, and civil society. These inclusive partnerships built upon principles and values, a shared vision, and shared goals that place people and the planet at the center are needed at the global, regional, national, and local level. During the past two years, I have been focused on SDG number three to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. My specific focus has been on quality of life issues for older persons, and my interest began with the first UN briefing I attended in New York City in 2017. The title of the briefing was The Global Aging Population, Impact and Implementation of Agenda 2030. It was at this briefing that I first heard about Agenda 2030, and I was eager to learn as much as possible as quickly as I could. I was inspired by the speakers, but I was also concerned because not one of the panel members spoke about the important roles the fine arts play in improving the quality of life for all people, but especially older persons. I realized that much of the literature on health and well-being for older persons completely omits fine arts participation, so I decided to focus my work there. I presented a paper on this very topic at the Aging and Society Conference held in Berkeley, California during the fall of 2017. I was one of only four presenters who discussed the many benefits of fine arts participation for older persons. My presentation focused on the physical, emotional, and social benefits of group singing. And let me take this moment to once again thank those members of Federation who submitted responses to my questionnaire about choral singing. Your answers were an integral part of my presentation. The paper was enthusiastically received, and I have continued to speak about this issue at other events, most recently at the Music Cities Conference, sponsored by Sound Diplomacy, this past October. I was introduced to the work of Sound Diplomacy by a colleague I met at that same UN briefing in 2017. After speaking with the founder, Shane Shapiro, I was invited to participate on the first panel session of the Lafayette Convention. The topic was Diverse Communities, Music, Diversity, City Development, 
and we discussed many topics, including the need for music in K-12 education and continuing the call for fully accessible buildings so that all creative artists and audience members have access to art spaces. We discussed gender and race inequalities with regard to housing and employment and took many questions from the audience. I met leaders from across the country, all trying to better the quality of life for their citizens through economic revitalization and community development. I hope by now you're asking yourself, what can I do? Trying to understand all of the information concerning Agenda 2030 can be daunting. The UN understands this and has created tools to help individuals get started. This is one of my favorites, The Lazy Person's Guide to Saving the World. Of course, this is meant to be a humorous way to engage people to become more aware and to show them that even small changes can have a profound and positive impact on the world. When you visit the Take Action page, you can view strategies at four different levels of action. Level 1, Things You Can Do From Your Couch, offers these suggestions. 1. Save electricity by plugging appliances into a power strip and turning them off completely when not in use, including your computer. 2. Stop paper bank statements and pay your bills online or by mobile app. 3. For those of you who use social media, share. Don't just like. If you see an interesting post about women's rights or climate change, share it so folks in your network see it too. Level 2 actions, things you can do at home, can be just as easy. 1. Air dry. Let your hair and clothes dry naturally instead of running a machine. When you wash your clothes, make sure the load is full. 2. Take shorter showers. Bathtubs require gallons more water than a 5 to 10 minute shower. 3. Recycle paper, plastic, glass, and aluminum. Level 3 suggestions include these things you can do outside your house. 1. Shop local. Supporting neighborhood businesses keeps people employed and helps prevent trucks from driving far distances. 2. Buy funny fruit. Many fruits and vegetables are thrown out because their size, shape, or color are not right. Buying these perfectly good funny fruit at the farmer's market or elsewhere utilizes food that might otherwise go to waste. 3. Use a refillable water bottle and coffee cup. This will cut down on waste and maybe even save money at the coffee shop. And the fourth level, things you can do at work. 1. Mentor young people. It's a thoughtful, inspiring, and a powerful way to guide someone towards a better future. 2. Women earn 10 to 30% less than men for the same work. Pay inequality persists everywhere. Voice your support for equal pay for equal work. And 3. Raise your voice against any type of discrimination in your office. Everyone is equal, regardless of their gender, race, sexual orientation, social background, and physical abilities. The United Nations wants all members of civil society to be informed, to be engaged, and to act to better the world in which we live. As musicians and music educators, we already make positive changes in our communities. The question is, what more can we do? You might choose to create a reuse, repurpose, recycle policy in your music studio, or decide to organize a concert to bring attention to hunger in your community and collect canned goods for donation to a local food bank. You might consider purchasing reusable water bottles with your logo on it and give them to your students. This will reduce the use of plastic bottles, serve as a clever bit of advertising for you, and enable your students to become more engaged. The options are limited only by your imagination. As your representative to the UN, I have a grounds pass that gives me access to many meeting rooms and other areas of the United Nations building. However, every member of civil society can visit the United Nations in New York City. 
It is as simple as requesting a visitor pass. Once inside, you can visit the UN Bookstore, view temporary art installations, and take a guided tour of the UN, which often includes a look into the General Assembly Room if it's not being used. Once you have your day pass, this is what you will see as you approach the building, a semicircle of flags that represent all of the member nations of the United Nations. You might be surprised to learn about all of the permanent art installations at UN headquarters. After walking through security, you see this beautiful sculpture just outside the security building. In 1996, Sphere Within Sphere by sculptor Arnaldo Pomodoro was presented as a gift to the United Nations by Lamberto Dini, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Italy. Versions of this sculpture can be seen throughout the world, including at the Vatican, the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden in DC, and at Tel Aviv University. Pomodoro said that the inner ball represents the earth and the outer ball represents Christianity. The design of the internal layers, which look like the gears of a complex machine, symbolizes the fragility and complexity of the world. The Peace Window, whose full title is The Window of Peace and Human Happiness, was a gift from the United Nations staff members, as well as Marc Chagall himself, presented to the United Nations as a memorial to Doc Hammerschholt. This beautiful work of stained glass stands about 15 feet wide and 12 feet tall. It was dedicated to Doc Hammerschholt's memory on September 17, 1964, exactly three years after Hammerschholt, then the second Secretary General of the UN, and 15 other people with him, died in a plane crash. The musical symbols in the panels evoke thoughts of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which was a favorite of Hammerschholt. Chagall was inspired by the text of Isaiah 9, verses 1 through 7, including verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The peace window is installed on the ground floor lobby at the UN, next to the meditation room. The meditation room, designed by Doc Hammerschholt just a few years before his death, is a place for quiet reflection. There's a notice outside the door of the meditation room, written by Hammerschholt. It begins like this. We all have within us a center of stillness surrounded by silence. This house, dedicated to work and debate in the service of peace, should have one room dedicated to silence in the outward sense and stillness in the inner sense. It has been the aim to create in this small room a place where the doors may be open to the infinite lands of thought and prayer. People of many faiths will meet here, and for that reason none of the symbols to which we are accustomed in our meditation could be used. However, there are simple things which speak to us all in the same language. We have sought for such things and believe that we have found them in the shaft of light striking the shimmering surface of solid rock. On most days, visitors, dignitaries, and staff members are treated to presentations, performances, displays, and interactive encounters in the lobby. On May 16th, I attended one of the final briefings of the year entitled Families and Climate Actions Focus on SDG 13. As I was leaving the building, I was invited to return to the lobby for a performance by these young dancers, all students of the Romanian National Opera Ballet School of Bucharest. The performance was introduced by one of the directors of the ballet school, and he spoke eloquently about the power of the arts to bring people together. As an organization affiliated with the United Nations, our federation is an integral part of a much larger and powerful group of global citizens brought together through shared goals. I invite all of you to attend the next Civil Society Conference to be held in Salt Lake City from August 26th through the 28th. I currently serve on the workshop subcommittee, and we've been meeting weekly to evaluate workshop proposals sent from NGOs from around the globe. 
The conference, Building Inclusive and Sustainable Cities and Communities, will focus on SDG number 11, but as you have perhaps started to understand, all of the goals are interrelated. I hope this brief introduction to the work of the UN has helped you to understand the basic goals of Agenda 2030, inspired you to learn more about the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, highlighted the special role Federation plays on the global stage, and encouraged you to become more involved by creating changes in your life and your work to support one or more of the SDGs. I hope to hear from many of you in the coming year. Please share your ideas, your successes, and your challenges. I'll be happy to answer your questions while we're in Florida, and you can always email me at this address. Thank you for your time, thank you for your support, and thank you for being great leaders for positive change in your communities.